In this video, we're going to take a look at how to implement a set data type in Solidity. So a set is a data structure which allows you to add or remove items by value. It ensures that there is at most one of each item in a set. So in other words, each item is unique. You can check if an item is present in a set and you can also iterate over all the items in the set. So here we'll go through a very simple set implementation in Solidity. So here we define a contract called set. And the first thing we do is define a controller variable which is assigned in the constructor. So this is common practice whenever you move code into its own contract, just to ensure that the entity creating the set is the only one that can modify the set. So this means a random person like me couldn't just take some set instance from a public contract and start modifying all the data. So here we're just assigning the controller to the creator of the set. So then in our contract, we store a list of items. So this is here to allow us to iterate over all the items in a set. We then have a mapping called presence, which allows us to determine the presence of an item in the set. So this is useful to ensure we don't add any duplicate items, along with, of course, allowing the user to query the presence of an item. So this set holds items which are of type address, but of course you could change that to any type. Unfortunately, Solidity doesn't have any support for generics to simplify this. So our first function size just returns the number of elements in the set. Our next function has determines if an item is present in the set. So we just pass in the item. So because our present value is an integer, the default value is zero. So zero means not present. But if we have a non-zero value, then this means the item is present. So this function will return true if that's the case. We also have a way of querying the index of an item in the set. So not only does the presence mapping store whether an item is in the set or not, but it also stores the index of this item. And specifically it stores the index plus one. So to get the index of the item, we then subtract one. So the reason we're storing the index plus one is because zero means an item is not present. And in order to encode the index zero, we need to add one to all the indices. So then index zero is represented with the value one, which means the item is present. So the next function we have is get, which just gets the item by its index. So we just index into the array and return that value. So now we have the add function, which adds an item to the set. So we take in the item as the first parameter. And firstly, we ensure that the person calling this function is indeed the controller. So as I said before, we don't want any random person uh, modifying the data of this set. So first of all, we check if the item is not yet present, because if it is already present, we don't want to add the item twice. So in this case, we'll add the item to the array, and then we'll also add the index plus one to the presence mapping. So the length of items at this time is indeed the index of the last item plus one. So then we have the remove function. We once again ensure it is the controller calling this function. So of course we can only remove an item when it is present, so we'll check if that's the case. So then we can get the index of this item by subtracting one from the presence value. And to delete the item from the mapping, we just have to set the presence value to zero. So now our item is removed from the mapping, but we also have to remove it from the array. So the easiest way to remove this item is to swap it with the last item of the array. And then we can just pop the last item off of the array. So now we have the clear function. So once again, do the controller check. So this function clears all the items in the set. So what we do is we iterate over every item by its index. So we can get the value of this item at this index, and then we can get its present value and set it to zero to delete it. So that will clear all the items from the mapping. And then after doing that, we can clear the array itself by just using delete. Now, when you first glance at this function, it does look very computationally expensive because we have to iterate over all the items. However, you might not know that actually deleting an item in Solidity gives you a gas refund. So this is because you are freeing up state storage on nodes across the network. So because of that, you are actually getting paid back to do this. So that means other than the minimum function called gas, this function isn't going to cost you any additional gas. Okay, so now finally we have the destroy function. So we'll once again do the controller check. And this function just destroys the set instance. So this is done when you want to garbage collect the instance entirely. So this just calls self-destruct. And if for some reason any eat was paid to this contract, then this gets paid back to the controller. It's unlikely that you'll ever bother actually calling this, even though it is good to garbage collect your resources. 
in the end it is going to cost you some gas so I can imagine you're not actually going to ever do this. So for gas efficiency purposes it might not actually make sense to create a contract instance for each set so instead you might want to inline these variables and functions directly in your contract and this should save you on a bit of gas but of course you should start off with good architecture and worry about optimizations down the road when necessary. Okay so let's test out this data type. So I'm on remix.ethereum.org and in here we can compile our set and then we'll just deploy this set to a virtual machine. So now if we come into our set instance, if we click size you can see that there are zero items in the set. So we'll just paste an item to add to the set and now if we click size you can see there's one item in the set. So this is the first item at index 0, so if we click get, as you can see this item comes up. If we check if the set has this item, it will say true. We can also get the index of this item, so as I said this is the first index, index 0. If we check if the set has a different address, as you can see that will return false. But then if we add this address, it will now return true. Then we can test out the remove functionality, so if we remove this item, then it once again returns false. But don't forget we still have that first item in our set, so if we check for that, it will still say true. But then finally we can clear the set entirely, and so now this item will also say false. And if we get the length of the set, you can see the size is zero. Okay, so that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and comment if you have any questions or problems. So thanks for watching, and special thanks to the Patreon supporters who helped make these videos possible.